Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. I don't know, maybe you're out of the country. Who who really knows? Eddie Radosovich, George Stoya here, Big 12 Media Days down in Arlington. Uh, day one is over. It's getting unprepared or what do we want to call They're that? Taking it down. They're taking it down for day one. Day two coming up tomorrow with Oklahoma in tow. Uh, Brett Moore, your mark. Big 12 commissioner spoke to the media this afternoon. Obviously, uh, he's kind of new to everything here. Yep. And, you know, George, you've been down here all afternoon. I almost didn't get in here today. Thank you to Joni with the Big 12 for uh, letting me breach the building. Thank you to Jerry for turning the AC on. Not really. Brett, you, it's, so it's, hot it's so, so hot, hot in here. It is hot in here. Brett Yormark, though, kind of the, the lead story of the day. Obviously, Oklahoma State and Texas spoke to the media as well. But, uh, George? Just let's start with Brett Yormark. What did you think of uh, the Big 12 commissioner and his thoughts uh, taking over here? Yeah, I mean, he was definitely a politician today, right? He got a lot of questions about OU in Texas. One for myself, in fact, I asked him about, you know, how do you replicate what those two programs bring to this conference? And he basically said, hey, this conference is more than just two teams. Uh, and he was asked a lot about, hey, why did they decide to leave early? And he said it was a win-win for everybody. Now, I think there's some truth to that, right, in terms of uh, – you know, the conference wants to move on. They're welcoming four new teams, but a win-win financially, I don't know about that for the Big 12 in terms of the money that OU and Texas brought in. So it's interesting to hear from him. The tone was, hey, we're going to celebrate OU and Texas. They've been a part of this conference forever. They're still a part of this conference moving forward is what he said. Uh, they'll always be a part of the Big 12, which I thought was an interesting quote. So it, it was interesting to hear from him, but the tone was definitely, hey, we're going to celebrate them on their way out now we'll see what that looks like during the season because i think there's a lot of teams here that probably disagree with that statement uh but it was it was interesting to hear from him and obviously he talked a lot about you know maybe adding teams he said they're open to that uh they may not do it they may do it he was very political today sure and yeah we'll see what that welcoming party is like in provo yeah. and uh you know all the other places that oklahoma is going to be going cincinnati is going to be interesting as well but uh mike gundy obviously oklahoma state heading back uh, to a Big 12 media day. They've been outspoken about the Bedlam rivalry and it coming to an end. Uh, he didn't back off once yeah. again today. Even yeah. even boatless, George, even boatless Mike Gundy. <laughs> boatless Mike Gundy, yeah. No, he was he was out there. I mean, he, he didn't say anything new really, right? He said the same things last year. Hey, Bedlam's over because OU decided to leave, which is partially true, right? I mean, if Oklahoma doesn't leave the conference, obviously Bedlam is still being played. Now, part of it too is, hey, OSU's got a ton of non-conference games already scheduled in the future. OU does too. I still think Bedlam's going to come back. It just might be 10 years, which is a long time. But yeah, Mike Gundy basically said, hey, it's OU's fault. If you're mad about Bedlam not being played, blame Oklahoma. Sure. Well, I think everybody knows how uh, Oklahoma fans feel about that. Certainly, uh, Texas obviously here today as well. Yeah. A lot of expectations for the preseason favorite Texas Longhorns. Yeah, and it's always funny too to come to this and see how many media members are here just to cover Texas. I was wandering over to their team breakouts and you cannot even get a question in because there's so many guys there. And, you know, I listened to Brock, or Quinn Ewers a little bit, uh, the quarterback obviously for Texas. They're taking expectations well, I think. I mean, I think Steve Sarkeesian was really good on the podium talking about, hey, we know we're picked to be the favorites, but also they haven't lived up to expectations in previous years when they have been picked, you know, to finish higher in the conference. So I think they're approaching it the right way. It's going to be interesting to see what they do this season. Uh, and again, you can tell the buzz here is, hey, Texas is kind of the overwhelming favorite right now. Sure. I'm sure there's a lot of people that enjoy hearing that and they're yelling at the computer <laughs> right now. As for Oklahoma, obviously they're going to be on the podium tomorrow. I think if you're watching this, you're probably an Oklahoma fan. You know the pivotal seasons that's coming for Brent Venables in year number two. As far as expectations for what you want to hear tomorrow, I, you know, it, it could go either way. I don't think that he's going to come out and say that season number one was a failure by any means. Obviously, the record six and seven Oklahoma fans are going to feel a little bit differently about that. Dylan Gabriel, Jonah Laulu, Drake Stoops, and Danny Stutzman, the four representatives yep. for Oklahoma. Let's start with Brent Venables. What do you expect to hear from uh, Oklahoma's head coach as he goes into year number two? Well, he's going to talk a lot. Uh, we know that. Uh, you know, they, they, I think they get 15, 20 minutes on this podium, and usually there's five or six questions to get asked. I bet there's maybe two questions, and we'll see what he says. But I, what I want to hear from him is, you know, does he realize the pressure and the expectations that are on this football team this year? I think that everyone, we, we feel it mounting this offseason, right, uh, after last year's disappointing year. I think there's a lot of people that say, hey, if they don't win 10 games this year, that's a failure. Uh, and I kind of think that Brent will say that tomorrow. He's like, hey, we, we need to go win football games this year. And I'm interested to see what his tone is when talking about that pressure 
and those expectations because I do think the pressure is a little bit on him and this team. For Oklahoma to get over that hump, to, for them to win football games, not lose four of the last five games, Dylan Gabriel is obviously going to have to be better. He played better towards the end of the season. You saw what happened at the Cheez-It Bowl. Uh, it'll be interesting to see kind of what his vibe is tomorrow as well as the quarterback at Oklahoma in year number two. Not only is Brent Venables going into year number two, but Dylan Gabriel is as well. Yeah, and I, I kind of want to hear from him. You know, what have you looked back on last season and say, hey, I can improve on that. Is it accuracy? Obviously, he missed some balls last year. Is it leadership? Could he take on a bigger leadership role with this group? You know, now that he's a year into the program and he understands, you know, I mentioned the expectations earlier. Last year, maybe he didn't understand totally, hey, what's it like to be the quarterback at a place like Oklahoma? Now he's in his second year. What does that look like? And the pressure's on him too, right? We talked a lot about Jackson Arnold sitting in behind him. If things go bad, I think he knows, hey, there's somebody behind me that they're willing to put in, whereas last year that wasn't the case. So uh, it's going to be interesting here from him. I think Danny Stutzman is huge right this year. He hasn't lived up to his potential. What does that look like? I think back to that quote that Brent said, hey, are you going to be the guy that jokes around or are you going to be the guy that can be an All-American linebacker? And I think a lot of people anticipate he could be that type of player this year. So it's going to be interesting to hear from all those guys. You know, it's going to be really interesting, too, because you talk about Danny Stutzman and needing to be more of a mature leader for this Oklahoma defense. But at the same time, you look at what he did on the field a season ago, led the Big 12 in tackles, yep. obviously had a lot of production from uh, the middle linebacker and they're going to need that to continue if they want to get out of this rut that Oklahoma's been in defensively. Yeah and you know I, I think it was Brent that said on his own show you know when they released the SEC schedule hey if we play good defense we're going to win 10 plus games we're going to have a chance to, to hang a banner I think was his quote you know I want to I want to ask Danny and, and Brent about those those quotes and kind of what does that look like I, I we, we think of the quote also of hey this defense is going to be on another planet um, you know, what does that look like? What, what needs to happen this year? Obviously, they add a lot of guys in the portal, uh, and I'm, we'll hear from those guys, you know, in the next month. But what does that look like for Danny stepping up as a leader, as a player? Like you said, he led the conference in tackles, but what does that exactly mean? Sure. Uh, so I, I think it's going to be interesting, again, to hear from those guys and kind of their perspectives and, you know, who stood out this summer. I know a lot of people are wondering about that. Um, so I think we're going to get a lot of questions answered tomorrow. You know, the one thing, too, with uh, Jonah Laulu that is quite interesting as well with his move inside, George, has been, you know, not only is they're putting a lot of stuff on his plate as far as moving inside, becoming a difference maker on the interior for Oklahoma defensively, but he's also kind of stepping into a leadership role. Yep. I mean, they don't just bring anybody down here to Big 12 Media Day. Yeah, it's a big honor to be selected. That's why it was a little bit of a surprise when you saw his name. Is You know, he didn't strike me as a guy that was a leader of this group, but clearly he is. And, and I think it also means, hey, he's going to play quite a bit. And I know we heard from Todd Bates and M Miguel Chavis back in the spring saying, hey, he made the move inside. He's a great pass rusher. He can do some things that we don't really have right now inside. So it's going to be interesting to see what can he contribute. I'm, I'm interested to hear from him. I don't think I've spoken to him. Uh, I think I missed his spring session. So uh, I, I'm interested to see how has he grown as a leader, but also I kind of just want to see him. And I, this sounds weird, but physically, yeah. uh, I know there's been a lot of talk. Interesting. About, <laughs> there's been a lot of talk about, hey, he's put on some weight. He's over 300 pounds. He looks great. Uh, he's been great in the, the, the workout room. So it's going to be interesting just to see him physically. Same with, I mean, all those guys. So sure. um, yeah, he's, he's definitely one that of the, of the four players, it's like, okay, what, what can he do? Because I think we kind of know what to expect from a guy like, obviously, Dylan Gabriel, Danny Stutzman, and obviously, I mean, Drake Stoops has been here forever. But Jonah Lualu, he's kind of a new character. I know he played a little bit last year, but for him to step up is pretty big. Yeah, no doubt. Well, it's going to be certainly interesting tomorrow from Arlington. Oklahoma entering what is somewhat of an unofficial official start to the 2023 football season here with Big 12 Media Day. George will be here. I'll be here. Bob Prisbilla will be on his way down. Obviously, some good news possibly with Jaden Jackson. Oklahoma defensive or Oklahoma target for the defensive line for Todd Bates would be a massive news. That's on the Crimson Corner on Soonerscoop.com from Josh McQuestion. And that should do it. From here in Arlington, Eddie George, Soonerscoop.com. Day two coming up tomorrow from Dallas.